Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box. Um, and it was during this week in 1987 that BAD began its long stint at number one. That And this was the era where Michael Jackson was really everywhere. Um, in many ways, BAD felt even bigger than Thriller because, well, Thriller was sort of the quintessential album that defined the modern Michael Jackson. Some would argue that Off the Wall did that but Thriller is the one where he really just took over the music world because everyone loved that album uh, but Bad in a way felt even bigger musically I would say Thriller and Bad are equally good I would say that both albums are so strong in terms of the songwriting, in terms of the production, in terms of the level of musicianship on the album that I think musical comparisons really come out equal. Nothing really to me stands out that makes one worse than the other because they're both really good. And again, it was the same production team of Michael himself and the great Quincy Jones. And they had, you don't want to call it a formula because it wasn't really a formula. It was just, these are great songs, so well-written, well-produced, well-arranged, made with the kind of care in the best music studios in the world that you just don't really see anymore. And even before the Pro Tools revolution, the idea of spending this much time, effort and money to make such a well-produced album, it was the kind of thing that people just stopped doing eventually, although Michael always did it because he was this sort of perfectionist. And you can even watch vocal outtakes of him singing in the studio where you just hear his voice isolated. So it's a, a faux a cappella, and pitch perfect. I don't know if he had literal perfect pitch, but when you listen to him sing a cappella, that voice is just perfect. The man knew his music. It wasn't just an, an icon. He really was a very talented and musical singer. But one of the things that I find so interesting about this album is with the 10 original tracks, almost all of them were singles and one way or another, all of them were hits. Literally, I could I can just read the list. There's, of course, the title track, hit, The Way You Make Me Feel, big hit. Speed Demon hit, Li Librarian Girl, that was a pretty big hit. Just Good Friends, that was with Stevie Wonder, that was a pretty big hit. Another Part of Me, that was a hit. Man in the Mirror, huge hit. I Just Can't Stop Loving You, that was, I think, the first single released from the album. That was a hit. Dirty Diana, huge hit. Smooth Criminal, huge hit. And Leave Me Alone, which wasn't an album track, but was recorded um, around this time, I do believe. Uh, that was... Um, it was recorded, I think, a bit, you know, it was recorded during these sessions. And that was also a hit at the time, albeit not on the original album. It's sometimes available in repackaging. And so just think about that. Because right now we're once again living in an era of singles rather than albums. And that's been made possible because of streaming services where we're no longer constrained by the physical limitations of an album in terms of the length of the music. And so while it's possible now to release a six hour long album that doesn't require any changing of physical media, no flipping of a record, changing of a CD, it's had the opposite effect in that people were realizing in the 90s, really, uh, that there was a lot of filler going into an average length compact disc album. And so people went back to the single. Bad was released in the golden age of albums, which is roughly, I would say, from the late 50s up to the early 90s. Um, the 70s and 80s probably being the most golden of this age, meaning these were the areas when albums have the least filler and people really made an effort to create a cohesive work of art across two sides of an LP. Bad absolutely fits the bill. Uh, but also implicit in this era of uh, great albums is that a lot of artists felt less of a need to have a lot of hit singles. Singles were always super important, but if you sold a lot of albums, you didn't necessarily need the biggest single. Michael Jackson was someone who did both simultaneously. His album sold huge, but because there were so many singles and so many hits that otherwise got played on the radio and MTV, um, 
he he managed to accomplish being both the king of singles and the king of albums or well, being the king of pop uh but again 10 tracks on a, on a record and every single one is a hit some monster hits i would say at least half of those were huge hits and the others were still big hits that people at the time even if they didn't own the album they would have heard the song somewhere on the radio on television somewhere in public because it was so ubiquitous and again, it's a unique moment in time that I don't think will come again. We're much more bifurcated in terms of the art and entertainment that we consume. Um, we're algorithmatized. And I don't necessarily blame the algorithms. I blame the fact that we have so many choices that the only way to sort of psychologically cope with it is to say, right, this is me in my R&B corner. This is me in my classic rock corner. This is me in my whatever is pop and trending on TikTok corner and sort of this idea of this monolithic artistic giant whether Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson I don't think we're going to see that again which is why Michael Jackson was the last of the superstars he was the, the there'll be no there's no heir to the throne of the king of pop for many reasons one because talent like that really only comes once in a generation but also because the way we we consume music has affected the way that artists produce music and it's changed the way that we conceive music and part of me worries that we might be going back to a sort of pre-19th century era where at least uh, in the European and so-called Western world music was considered ancillary it was considered a bonus but not the main course in the mid 19th century, because of Richard Wagner, who I've talked about a lot here, music really became something that was artistically respected, commercially viable, and socially implicit uh, and integral, really, to the culture of the countries and societies that produced it. And that only became more apparent, more magnified in the era of recorded sound. Um, but it seems we're drifting away from that position of music being both artistically, culturally and commercially important. So maybe Michael Jackson was not only the lost pop star, but maybe one of the lost great musicians that all of the world knows and loves. We shall see. Till then, you've got the album to listen to. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.